And so our next speaker coming up is Alexei Akumov. And Alexei is the head of API at Adyen. And so we will move directly to Alexei. Hello. Hello, hello, Shirley. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, also wonderful. I'm here in Amsterdam and we have great weather. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. We're extremely happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I guess I'm ready to start. Go for it. You sound great. The lighting is wonderful. <laughs> all right. All right. Very good. So hello, everyone. Happy to see you all. My name is Alexei, and I work for Adyen and for almost five years, and I'm dealing with APIs for almost a decade. So today I want to share some insights on how we do API governance and design at Adyen. And it might be useful for somebody in a similar position or focusing on similar efforts, as well as for developers who work on creating public facing APIs. So first of all, let me quickly introduce myself. I started my career in software engineering, then switched to technical communication, had experience working in startups, scale-ups, uh, and now responsible for API strategy, API governance, design, and everything else that leads to great developer experience. And besides software engineering, I was studying linguistics. And so my background helps me find some interesting angles in how we look at design APIs as well. So we all know that API is application programming interface. And that's the interface part, which is often overlooked, while interface enables interaction. And basically, API is a formal language that we expect our programs to use to talk to each other. And ironically, at the same time, there are always people behind these machines. Some create this communication language, some use it to teach their programs to talk to other applications. And this is also the place where we can see that tech and culture of human beings meet each other, something that we can take into account. Uh, today, I will be looking at the Adyen use case. So let me also quickly introduce what we do. Adyen is a global fintech company, does payment processing, provides other financial services. We support more than 200 different payment methods all over the world, operating globally. We have a very scalable architecture and seen a lot of growth during the COVID crisis and before that. And we are serving an enormous number of different companies, so from different verticals with different needs, uh, with different markets. So basically, you can imagine that API is a bread and butter of our business. And we are a single platform. Uh, this is our conscious choice. So we want to make sure that all our customers, they connect to our platform through API. And then uh, the platform itself, it all works with APIs and connects through APIs to different schemes, payment method providers, and other platforms. If you think about the uh, scale of this platform, so basically what we have, we have dozens of public APIs and at the same time thousands of internal APIs. And they operate on web, mobile, terminal, and other devices. We have hundreds of thousands of API calls per minute on average. Uh, we have private cloud distributed across uh, multiple regions over the globe. And uh, last year, with these APIs, we processed more than uh, 300 billion of euro. So basically, we see a lot of growth there. And we should be available 24-7 because it's payments, right? And of course, there are challenges related to that with the technology choice that we use, with, uh, of course, security, scalability, availability, and so on and so forth. You can see that managing such a big platform and APIs on such a big platform can be very complicated. Uh, so basically, one of the complexities I already mentioned, payments never sleep. We need to make sure that everything we do keeps our platform available for our customers 24-7. Then we exist from 2006. Of course, it's quite a common situation when you build a new platform from scratch and you can make some decisions uh, from the beginning. But in our case, there is already a big history of decisions. And this is also why our platform was such successful. But in our case, we also need to make sure that all the new decisions are really fit into our structure and strategy. And another big challenge that I saw is that we have a lot of autonomous teams. We traditionally want to move fast, which means that every team has everything to make decisions, to deliver and deploy products. At the same time, it's really complicated when you want to think about the entirety of your APIs and want to make sure that everything is consistent and moving in the right direction. 
So as you might imagine, in these circumstances, API governance is a challenge. Yeah, what do we do? Um, again, uh, this is one of the examples from recent Gartner research that uh, if you look uh, at the first uh, corner here, API governance should never create a bottleneck. So how can we make sure that everything that we do is not creating a bottleneck for the company? And it's always fast uh, in how we deploy and deliver new products. How can we be fast uh, to the market? A very important realization here is that API decisions are never purely technical or non-technical. So a lot of things that we need to take into account and keep in mind, like I mentioned at the beginning, there is always a human being somewhere between uh, the API idea, API implementation, and then somebody integrating against your API. Uh, and if you just focus on the technical side, and there are a lot of interesting technologies and topics and uh, trends and everything that we need to follow and must never overlook, but it might happen that this technology is just not fit in your particular use case or not being adopted or well implemented. So there is always a human factor as well. Uh, specifically, what I recommend everybody to think about how you can implement API design and API governance into your existing company culture, especially in a situation with a company like Adia, existing from 2006. Company culture is a lot of things, but to summarize company culture is basically how we do things here. So how uh, do we collaborate? How do we implement? How do we make decisions? How then we can make sure that uh, it's going in the right direction? And uh, it's also how we write, test, and deploy our code, and um, a lot of things. Of course, it means processes, it means uh, guidelines, procedures, it also means knowledge, and it also means people and work habits and a lot of other things. At Adyen, we also focus a lot on our company culture, and luckily for our engineering team, we have made something that we call our way of engineering, so here, for example, you can see some of the things that we try to focus on in our world. And this is very helpful for you if you're also working with API governance, API design challenges. So basically, you can look at this and say, OK, this is what works well with our team, and this is what makes it more difficult. For example, I want to emphasize some things here. For example, we are designers, architects, coders, testers, and security officers. In this case, it means that everybody should try to take that and go that extra mile and try to look around and also uh, see if something else can be improved. So everybody can be a disruptor, which means a lot of freedom, which is great. Uh, and we really value that. But from the API design point of view, it means that a lot of API design decisions can be made maybe outside of the scope of the API governance team. How can we make sure that if you want to be included, uh, it's also not in a way that is disrupting and uh, preventing somebody from making right decisions uh, when they work on the API product. Uh, at the same time, every team really owns when, where, and uh, how the code goes live, which means that API at the end is something that is owned by the team. And this is the only way how the team can be uh, very fast in what they do. Basically, what you can see here that API decisions are really complex and also impactful. And this means that they require diverse knowledge. Um, at the same time, they should be made fast. And also, once it's done, it's done. So basically, if you look at the definition of done for APIs, in our case, our API is done when it's already been used in production. So why, when it go, goes there, it's very difficult to change something. Of course, there will be new versions of your API, but there will be somebody always using this API if you think about the scale and history of all the things that we provide. So here are a few tips on, like, on the things that we do to make sure that we are successful in our API governance. First of all, um, we created an API board or API review group. Basically, uh, this is a group of people from different teams who are experts in the domain, but also who know a lot about uh, APIs in general, how we want to build APIs, and who are able to contribute their time uh, for doing API reviews for their teams, but also for other teams to make sure that we are moving in the right direction. And uh, we also focus on API design in general, trying to uh, yeah, uh, basically 
create guidelines before we start any development. We also review existing APIs and new APIs and try to give feedback for different teams. And of course, all the decisions that we make, then we write down and provide the guidance for future decisions, for future reviews, for future teams. At the same time, there is a lot of tooling that we also look into and a lot of uh, other processes that we support with this uh, API board. Uh, then another thing that is really beneficial in our case is to make sure we have a single place to discuss all APIs. Uh, it sounds simple, but we found this to be very challenging because again, different teams, different people, they really tend to use different tools. Sometimes it's just easy to look at code, sometimes it's Postman, sometimes it can be a Word document, right? Or maybe some email chain or some other things. Everything can be useful. But as I mentioned, it's important that you include different people from different teams with different expertise. Only in this case, you can make sure that API decisions that you make, API design is uh, sustainable, scalable, and easy to understand by everybody. And to make sure that this happens, you really need to have something visual as much as possible. We found Stoplight um, working well for us. So in this case, we can have a design in one place. We can um, play with different uh, designs, endpoints, create different mocks, also create examples for different use cases. And also it's visual. So uh, it's good that it's using open API format underneath, but at the same time, everybody has uh, ability to contribute to these discussions. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's good when you already have a style guide and uh, you can describe different rules there, but it's important that the style guide is in a place where everybody can contribute. So it shouldn't be hidden, it should be easy to find. It should be in a, in a place where everybody looks for it, but also uh, more people should be able to uh, create issues or maybe edit uh, and uh, share their opinions and suggestions if something doesn't work. Only in this case, it will be successful. Of course, style guide can be very long and it's difficult to remember everything. So another uh, thing that really worked for us well is to implement LinkedIn, where you can automate a lot of rules and then embed it into your CI maybe processes, uh, other pipelines uh, where developers can immediately get feedback and see uh, if API is compliant with the recent style guide changes. As I mentioned, open API format uh, can also work very well uh, for solving multiple things. Of course, it depends on your technology and your frameworks, but if you're working with most of REST, REST APIs, I think Open API is the most mature format at the moment. And if you start uh, working with it, there are other benefits that maybe are not very clear in the beginning. For example, you can easily use different tools like Postman, Stoplight, Swagger Hub. Most of the tooling nowadays supports Open API. You can use custom extensions to store additional information and also you can switch uh, to design first process which is always beneficial for api design practices and you can use api contract testing as well and of course api is changing so it's important to have evolution and version strategy that is shared and public uh, publicly available for everybody who is involved in the building of your api this is all about uh, how the process can look like in the company that is already making a lot of APIs. But it's important that it's not only API design and governance, it's also important that you invest time in good tooling and frameworks that your developers are actually able to do great APIs. And this is what you should be also looking into. So basically to summarize, API design collaboration is a key and there are multiple things that can help you with that. Then API development, it's good if you can evaluate the entire life cycle, how your API is being discussed, uh, ideated, tested, created, deployed, and then sunsetted. And then you can analyze where the bottlenecks are and help with that. And then if you think about API consumers, it's always important to get their feedback from um, different channels that you have. For example, if you have the developer relations team, it can also help you a lot. And in all these cases, you will be dealing with humans, you will be dealing with uh, work culture and a lot of things. API journey is interesting. You never know what's next, but I wish you good luck in that. Thank you very much. That's it, and I'm open to any questions. Thank you, Alexei, for that presentation. So our first question for you is, you know, in just thinking generally and broadly about APIs, would you say an open API um, is better than an async API, or is it the reverse? Yeah, I would say, of course, uh, it should be the right uh, form and the right tool for, for the right uh, technology choice, right, right use case. 
So it's hard to say that something is better or something is uh, not working because it really depends on the use case. At the same time, of course, OpenAPI is a very mature format, uh, which has been like, really supported by a big community behind that, and I'm very happy to see that. I think API is also, uh, it's a lot of things, but it's growing very fast. Uh, we use OpenAPI uh, in our APIs and practices, but we are very curious about what companies for Sync API as well. Great, thank you. Next question is REST or GraphQL? Yeah, okay. This is also one of the you know, like difficult questions in general. And of course, again, it depends on the technology. REST uh, has been known already for, for a decade, and it's, it's still, uh, I think, one of the most popular uh, API architectural styles. It's it, uh, received a lot of adoption and frameworks and everything. And GraphQL, again, is very interesting, but I see that it's not uh, for all the use cases. So it's not like either this or that. They both have an uh, opportunity to evolve. And so you talked a lot about culture, culture meeting technology. And so what specific recommendations would you give to, you know, to help an, um, a tech company shift its culture in a way that really supports this work and supports productivity? Uh, yeah, I, I think the main key is, of course, collaboration and also understanding that uh, you cannot just solve uh, such challenges with only processes or new technology. So you really need to understand what your culture is, what your working culture is, and also how it differs from different teams, from different offices, uh, from different departments that you have. Uh, and this understanding will be the key for you to get successful because API design and API governance is a lot about coordination and cooperation, and that's why it's important. Great. We also have an, an, a question, another question from the audience, which is, you know, what is the best tool to use for API testing? For API testing, I would say there are plenty of tools and it really depends on, sorry, uh, your, your, your setup, your frameworks. So it's not simple to, and also there are multiple things how you can test your API. So of course, end-to-end -end testing, functional testing, work testing, contract testing. Uh, so I would not name just a, a single tool for that. Wonderful. Next, when does it make the most sense to use extensions for open APIs? That's a good question. Uh, what we like about open API is that it's, it allows you to add something in addition to your API context with extensions. It's actually making it very powerful. And so one of the uh, use cases, of course, to do something for documentation, and we already do this for our documentation portal, uh, which we are going to open source, by the way, soon. Uh, at the same time, there are a lot of things like interparameter constraints that are not supported by open API format uh, by default. But we find it very important, especially in our APIs when there is a lot of complexity and there is a lot of validation logic. If we can move this logic uh, to the API contract layer, then we can also build better API contract testing, or um, I don't know, maybe also better validation on that. Uh, customers, API consumers can also rely on that. So this is maybe one of the examples where we find it very useful. Wonderful. So can you tell us a little bit more about what's next for you in your in your trajectory, you know, what kinds of projects you're working on and what folks can look out for? Uh, basically, just for our Adyen Dev Twitter, and there are a lot of uh, news that we share there. Adyen is growing very fast in the payments industry, and recently also launched the issue product, and also we are like, operating globally, uh, which means a lot of different things, and this is all uh, enabled with APIs. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for taking the time to be here this afternoon. Um, the last thing I would ask is, you know, can you please share with, you know, the, with all of us, what the best way is to reach you and how people can continue to follow your work? Yeah, I'm very happy uh, to talk more about these challenges and others. Please find me, I guess, on Twitter, Alexei Akimov, or on LinkedIn. So basically, five A's, Alexei Akimov, API, Adyen, Amsterdam. This is the best way to find me. Great. 
also, thank you. Thank you for your time. First of all, you know, I'd like to thank all the speakers who are here today. I mean, these conversations have been so productive and so enlightening. I do have um, something that is a little bit more on the personal side. And so Alexa, if you can share with us, you know, what other, um, what other stages or what other topics you're looking forward to learning more about during this conference and why? Uh, I am uh, very interested in general where the whole financial industry is moving because I think the, there is always a, a lot happening and uh, in the open banking space in general and with fintech and there are a lot of interesting angles that I've never thought about and usually we focus on one thing and then something else is going on but also a lot of technical talks like the recent talk about hey to us I found this very insightful for me so some new angles this is always that's what I can get from any conference. And API Days is one of, I think, the best conference on APIs nowadays. Thank you. So once again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. You know, I'd like to take this time to thank all of the speakers on this stage, you know, as we learn more about API designs and API styles. You know, as many of you already know, you know, we have lots of really wonderful things going on today. Um, and next we'll have a break, but during the break, we really want to encourage you all to visit our partners village, which is a great place to network and to see all of the, the different booths that are here at the conference. You know, it's a really great time, not only to learn about, you know, the different projects that people have going on at um, the various organizations and firms that are, here today, but also there are some raffles, there are drawings, there are definitely some um, opportunities for free trials for different things. And so please check out the Partners Village. Um, we will resume the stage at, um, at 1.30. And so you have a little bit of time um, to kind of do what you have to do and to explore and to, to visit the booths in the, partner village, the Partners Village at this time. And so if folks don't have any other questions for us, we will pause here and we look forward to seeing you all again at 1.30. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, thank you for being here. <laughs>